So a sphere has a volume of 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. And while that may be very important to some mathematicians, why is it important in space travel? Especially when it comes to traveling to other stars and potentially habitable planets. Well, first we really need to take a look at some examples of how the volume of a sphere changes as the radius increases. So at a radius, the value of four, you get a volume of 268. The radius of 10, you get a volume of 4188. With a radius of 100, you get a volume of 4.188 million. From this progression, you can see that if you have a relatively small increase in the radius, you get a huge increase in the volume of the sphere. Now, so far, we haven't put any units into this calculation. It could be radius in meters and the volume in cubic meters. But since we're looking at space, we're really going to need something much larger. Now, it's just over four light years to the nearest star system. However, if you go up to a radius of 10 light years, there are eight star systems within that volume of space. Extending the distance out further to a radius of just 12 light years, there are a total of 22 star systems. But when you extend that radius out to 100 light years, it's possible there may be 14,000 star systems within that volume of space. So we really have to think differently about the three dimensions and the volume of space when considering distances to other stars. Alpha Centauri, our closest star system, doesn't have much potential either for finding life or for human habitation. However, it's fairly clear we don't have to travel thousands of light years to find a star system with potential. With a possible 14,000 star systems within that 100 light year radius, one of those is highly likely to be worth a visit or even a stay. It's probable that we'll find one significantly closer than 100 light years. Still just leave us with the problem of how to travel that far and that fast, but these distances in space are not beyond the potential capabilities of an innovative and exploring species like the human race. Once we've made it out to the stars, it will be possible to use similar technological methods to progress to yet another star and leapfrog our way across the galaxy. The only question then is whether we should do it and how much effort should we devote to the task.